This is News 25 with Deanna O'Donnell and Stacy Jensen. News 25, local news you can count on. News is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Give them a call, 727-9900. Welcome to News 25 here on KPVM TV and Ace Country Radio. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. And I'm Stacey Jensen. It is Monday, March 14th. Well, at least two people are hurt when two vehicles collide at the intersection of Highway 160 and Homestead Road here in Pahrump. News 25 spoke with Fire Chief Scott Lewis Saturday afternoon at the very busy scene. We are dispatched for a report of a two vehicle accident. The initial report was that there was injuries and also entrapment. Our squad, which was in close proximity at the time of the call, was on location within about 30 seconds and found two people injured, two non. The two injured persons are currently being assessed, determining whether they need to get a trauma or to the local hospital. We're underway with also fluid control in the scene. One of the bystander uh, pulled one of the doors open on one of the vehicles, which we don't recommend, but it was done in this case. Thus, we didn't no longer had entrapment. As you can see, it's still a very active scene. There's a lot of dynamics to it still, including a, a manhole cover with the collar has been dislodged. We've made a notification for that vendor to come out and secure. And we're in a very active area at 160 and Homestead with a lot of people coming in and out of the Maverick fuel station. And one person is transported to Desert View Hospital in Pahrump after a collision that happened at the intersection of State Route 160 and State Route 372. The Nye County Sheriff's Office and Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue were dispatched to a two-vehicle crash just before 5.30 Saturday afternoon at the intersection of State Route 160 and State Route 372. All occupants were assessed by medics and one person was transported to Desert View Hospital for treatment of injuries sustained in the crash. Both vehicles were heavily damaged and had to be towed from the scene. Traffic was slow through the area while first responders helped those involved, conducted an investigation, and cleaned up debris. And one person who was riding a bicycle was transported by ground ambulance to Desert View Hospital this morning following a vehicle versus bike crash on Homestead Road just south of Gamebird. Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies and Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue were dispatched to that scene. Traffic was diverted around the crash site during the investigation. Well, News 25 will return with more local news right after this break. You're watching News 25, the most recognized and farthest reaching local news in Nye County. News 25, local news you can count on. And welcome back. Nevada Highway Patrol was called to investigate an officer-involved crash that happened this afternoon. The two-vehicle rear-end collision occurred at Basin Avenue and Lola Lane. According to a witness on scene, the sedan struck the back of an unmarked police cruiser. No injuries were reported. And work continues on the new animal shelter under construction on Siri Lane here in Pahrump. The modern, much larger facility is expected to open later this year. Right now it's being run by Desert Haven Animal Society, a local nonprofit. But Tuesday, Nye County Commissioners will discuss the possibility of putting the shelter under the county's direct control. And that has Desert Haven's Beth Cockabulius a bit concerned. So we have a new board of directors. We have new officers that were elected at our last meeting on the 8th. Um, we just recently found out that um, there is an item on the Board of County Commissioners uh, agenda for the county to take over the new building uh, that has been built at 1580 East Siri Lane. We um, just happened to find out looking through the the county website looking at seeing what was going on with the Board of County Commissioners. Uh, we had no previous notice as to why they've decided. We've been told in the past that we would be able to bid on the new building and that we would be informed and then we found out that this is what they were trying to do is, is all of a sudden now on the agenda it states that they're going to um, I, I'm guessing vote uh, in regards to the county taking over the new shelter. They're saying that they can save money, um, which um, according to what we see on there, I don't see that that's going to be possible. Um, with our bid that we had, it may be a little higher, but it's also um, not uh, covering, it's covering more employees um, than what they're projecting. We've made some changes to how we do our ordering, to how we do the food purchasing, um, how we do our cleaning supplies. Um, that has 
definitely gotten us down significantly. Uh, we are looking at um, projected savings even more, especially if we had that new building, it definitely would be even less. Between our food changes and our supplies and our litter changes, um, we're easily saving about thirteen to $15,000 a year. Not to say that the people in the past were doing anything wrong, I just looked at what we had going on and where we could make some changes that would be physically responsible, and those are the places that I found. So the 5013Cs, the nice thing is that's considered a charitable donation. So people are able to give those donations and write those off. Um, we're able to get a lot of uh, people to come in, like the Jordan's Ways Project. They look for the nonprofits to come in and support. Um, they were here this last November and they helped us raise $8,000. Board of County Commissioner's meeting is on Tuesday the 15th. Uh, from what I see, we are item number 27 on the docket, um, and it's going to be held at the Board of Commissioners uh, Chambers here in Pahrump, Nevada. I would love for people to show up and show their support for the animals. Um, if we stay as a no-kill shelter, um, the, it's in the best interest of the animals. Um, our fear is, as a county shelter, that generally means that they become a kill shelter, and we don't want that for our animals here. And tomorrow's County Commission meeting starts at 10 a.m. at the Commission Chambers, located at 2100 East Walt Williams Drive, right here in Pahrump. And March Madness is back, and that means college basketball fans are going to be spending a lot of time watching TV. But as Dr. Donald Ford with Cleveland Clinic explains, it's important not to sit for too long. We have some medical concerns when it's a really long period of time that people could actually develop something as serious as a blood clot. I think that would be unusual in the circumstance of March Madness, uh, but it is a good caution that you should be getting up and moving around every 15, 20 minutes or so. Dr. Ford says you could also watch the games while exercising, whether that's at the gym or at home while on a treadmill or stationary bike. However, if you are planning to sit for the entire game, make sure to take breaks during the commercials and walk around and stretch out. And don't forget to drink plenty of water. It can be easy to get dehydrated, especially especially when you're consuming alcohol. Dr. Ford says you should also be mindful of what you're eating. Try to go for more low-fat options and skip anything with a lot of salt in it. A lot of the prepared foods, particularly if you're going out and getting them, the wings, uh, the pizzas and so forth, check those labels. Those are loaded with salt. And for anybody with high blood pressure, any kidney concerns, those are those are, are things that we want to stay away from, those, those high salt foods. Dr. Ford says March Madness can also be a good time to start a new workout routine or add some healthier foods into your diet, especially as you're watching all those incredible athletes on the court. All right, we'll have more news on the other side of this break. You're watching News 25, brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. News 25, local news you can count on. Well, traditional schools are not the only ones facing difficulties in staffing these days. Those schools that serve special needs students are as well. It's especially crucial for visually impaired children to have enough in-person support. So one school is now training its own would-be teachers. Kim Martinez reports. Teacher shortages are, are happening all over the country and particularly in our very narrow niche of, of visual impairment. But as Jared Kittleson explains, the head of the Foundation for Blind Children in Phoenix, Arizona, they're working to solve that problem. Teaming up with Arizona State University, they're providing college students who want to become teachers of the visually impaired one day, a hands-on experience in their future field. Ivan Santiago and Cameron Smith are both wrapping up their student work and say the exposure they've gotten is unparalleled. This is a really valuable experience getting to work here and also like take our classes here and intern here. It's not the same at all as just like being in a classroom and learning about the students because a textbook um, visual impairment is it just doesn't do justice for what it can look like in different kids. It's an underserved population less than one percent of uh, individuals have a visual impairment and so for me personally, I had teachers in my life that made a big difference and made me successful, so I wanted to give that back to the students that I interact with. But perhaps one of the most important things these TBIs, short for teachers of the visually impaired, are learning is how to bring the students' whole team on board. So the TBI's role isn't just about the one-to-one -one 
experience with the, the student. It, it, it really encompasses the entire system. It could be working with a fourth grade teacher to help teach them how the assistive technology works, or it could be basic accessibility to a PowerPoint presentation or something as simple as a seating arrangement. Uh, our job is not to teach the curriculum. Our job is to make sure that they can access the curriculum. So those skills will also translate when they get um, graduate high school and going to college or a vocational goal. So in, in that sense, if you make them successful where they could access your information, that will just carry along the rest of their life. It's super fulfilling. It's, I mean, these kids teach us as much as we teach them. Accessing a world that may have seemed inaccessible if not for these future teachers. Kim Martinez reporting. For today's Save a Pet, we're back at Desert Haven Animal Society where Beth introduces us to Thule. Today's Save a Pet segment is made possible by Realty Executives in Action. Put the team at Realty Executives in action for you. Hi, I'm Beth and I'm here at Desert Haven with Thule for our Save a Pet. Thule is a friendly three-year-old boxer. She is brown with a little bit of black markings and some white. She's super sweet. She likes to play. She seems to get along with other animals and she is looking for her new forever home. So if you're interested in seeing Thule, please come down and see us. We're open Wednesday through Sunday from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Our telephone number is 775-751-7020. We're located at 1511 East Siri Lane behind the Sheriff's Office and Courthouse off of Kitty Hawk and Siri. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Lerner and Rowe Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. I'm saying Thule um, has that same boxer shake. Yes. She's so cute. Love boxers. Look at the weather out there. It's going to be fabulous. Look at nice sunshine. I love it with the time chains. All right. Let's get more weather update with John in just a moment. Hi. Good evening, Nevada. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee, the dollop of sour cream on your burrito, the melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hi, good evening, Nevada. It's John Kohler from the KPVM Channel 25 Weather Studios. Big weekend I had this weekend. I flew to Alaska and back, went to see my mom. Uh, we celebrated daylight savings time, and now we're here for the weather. And look at this, Fernley Fallon, Carson City. You're all kinds of interesting up north in the mid-60s, but also a weather advisory. Rain, wind, and snow heading your way, especially in the higher elevations. And uh, they want you to know about it, so I'm going to let you know about it, too. Watch out. Uh, get down to Tonopah and, and Goldfield, not too bad, uh, lower 60s. Beatty heating all the way up to 70 degrees. Amber goes in Las Vegas, impressing everybody in the class with a 73 degree highs today. That's the high spots in the state. And out to Death Valley, starting to feel like Death Valley out there at 84. And here in Pahrump, well, let's take a look. It's paradise, don't you know? 72 degrees. It's our current temperature and the today's high. So congratulations, we all win. South southwesterly winds to seven miles per hour. Humidity bone dry at 12% as that sun rose this morning in all its glory and promise at 6.56. Thank you, daylight savings time. And uh, look for a sunset about an hour and a half now, 6.50 p.m. Uh, we'll head to a low tonight of 47 degrees and that humidity index is kicking up. Does that mean we get some clouds tomorrow and the rest of the day? I don't know, what do you got? Yeah, a little cloud tomorrow, look at that, 77 degrees. And then look at those winds. Boy, they're really going to be hitting and missing with us this week. But 12 miles per hour goes to 20, down to 7, up to 12, 19, 18, 16. It's going to be a, a blustery uh, weekend for sure. And uh, uh, I mean, the clouds will come and go. Nobody's really talking about rain. Temperatures staying reliably in the mid-70s, and that's pretty nice until about Sunday. The bottom drops out and rapidly recovers on Monday. It's a hodgepodge. So we'll keep a watch on all this mess happening over here and, and over here, and we'll let you know, like right here. All right, back to the desk. Here's Deanna. Thanks so much, John. Well, there's a couple uh, of events coming up yeah. uh, this week. One of them is in Henderson. It's going to be, uh, well, this one actually, St. Patty's Day um, celebration is going to be Friday, March 18th at the Bounty Hunter right there on 2nd Street. They're going to have all sorts of happenings, including karaoke and a pool tournament, best corned beef and cabbage, they say, in town. Can't wait for corned beef and cabbage yeah. this week. Shepherd's pie. That's there my, go. my go-to. And, of course, in Henderson, there's going to be an event, a Spring Forward Family Music Festival, happening March 19th. 
Yep, that's going to be on Water Street at the Plaza, free admission. It's all put on by the city of Henderson and again at the Water Street Plaza. It's going to be a fun-filled day of live entertainment, so lots of fun. That begins all at 10 a.m. and uh, uh, some sad news today. I mean, I we get so many um, celebrity deaths and things this one hurt. that's, uh, you know, so upsetting. William Hurt. William Hurt today. Yeah. And um, so, well, actually, right. yesterday, was it? And um, yes. he passed away as a result of prostate cancer. And uh, so, rest in peace, William yeah. Hurt. Broadcast news, that's where I remember him from. There you go. He's fantastic. Yep. All right. Well, that's going to wrap up this edition of News 25. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. I'm Stacy Jensen. Good night. Good night.